Hello and welcome to the Living Life Discourses on the Greatest Call Channel. The global voice for expanding consciousness. The National Library of Medicine, the National Center of Biotechnology Information, published an article in July of 2012 and that article was on an Australian caregiver's experience in palliative care and that brings us face to face with our own mortality our own death her name was Bronnie Ware. The article was on the top five regrets of the dying. A journey we all share. And if we so well, there are so much to glean from those who have walked their final steps on this beautiful home folks this beautiful spaceship and have been transparent and vulnerable about their regrets things they would have done otherwise should they have had the chance and we shall give you all the top five regrets of the dying momentarily and as you all know we shall continue to glean the best knowledge and narratives from every corner on the planet sages saints scientists prophets and poet and especially in this discourse a palliative caregivers research or chronicle and an author Bronny word for the singular purpose of expanding your consciousness folks and that of mine before we live before we expire from this plane The top five regrets of the dying, as the book and article put it, are not surprising and localized. In only Bronnie's caregiving home, but they are universal. And a deep introspection of our current lives, irrespective of our age, shall shine light upon the same regret, the same or similar great you know with a book like this followed by the article it is not one for the dying it cannot be for the dying as there are no benefit for the dying on this planet any longer however it is of great essence and importance for the living you and me folks you and me that is what may be a tragic or catastrophic event could be the springboard the springboard to saving humanity from dying with their dreams with their expansion of consciousness with the full capacity the gamut Or how far we would have been able to expand you see all the regret we shall see very soon are the pith the sum and substance of this channel it etched expansion of consciousness as the book beautifully states in page 69 and I quote success does not depend on someone saying yes 
we will publish your book as an author or re- rejecting or say no we won't success is about having the courage to be you to publish the book regardless to go out there and pour your heart into the book you want to publish and it matters diddly squad if a hundred people raise it or a hundred million you shall be way happier and will expire will leave this plane of existence this plane of consciousness without that regret see we came into this life to be a conduit a channel for the expansion of consciousness and whether it has a billion effect or a few turns or a few ones it is immaterial it is immaterial our primary duty is to make sure we do not close that channel that conduit is to make sure we are not plastic or rigid but malleable to be sculpted and molded by the mighty hand by the mighty hand of ultimate consciousness you see the book also encourages us to spend some time in nursing homes especially in the west we rarely think about nursing homes about the infirm and the old in fact it is done on purpose to keep them away so we don't think about retirement old age and death however spending some time there obviously would help cut through the chaff the things in life that is swaying us from life's most important essence will help us cut through the chaff of life and make bare the most important things we are to do we came here to do will help us reduce most of the distractions of life not to keep you too long in suspense here are the top five regrets gleaned by bonu were in her lifelong career as a caregiver uno numero uno number one number one regret of the dying as gleaned from all over the planet is i wished i'd had the courage to live a life true to myself not the life others expected of me again the number one regret of the dying the number one universal regret of the dying is i wish i'd had the courage to live a life true to myself true to each soul not a life others and society expected of me of them of us and we all know we have talked about this on this channel many many times folks many times do we really sit down to analyze our fast paced life about what we are doing on a daily basis Steve Jobs who co-founded Apple with Steve Wozniak constantly and daily looked into the mirror to ask himself if today is my last day in my life would I be doing what I'm about to do what decision am I going to walk on today 
he did that constantly if not every morning from his own speech nothing on the planet is more important than periodic if not so often but periodic introspection of our sojourn stay on this planet again nothing is more important than to periodically look into our lives to assess from within if we are fully living the lives we want to live or we are just following societal expectations of school corporate bulldog marriage kids one vacation a year a place to live some form of transportation retirement and death or expiration are we doing so thus because that's what we feel deeply within us or are we just going through societal motion and expectations if the latter we all know let us remember unfortunately we are going to be part of the 90 percent of the planet population that die that live that live this beautiful spaceship in regret unfortunately sadly remember we are not here forever that our time is finite and incredibly fleeting especially we bury ourselves in activities and time runs so fast when we do bury ourselves in activities without taking time back for careful and deep analysis our lives shall be one that we may have to regret before leaving this plane and that time it is too late unfortunately because nobody has been able to beat nobody has been able to live forever on this plane and in this body This, unfortunately, living a life without careful and deep analysis and introspection done periodically or constantly shall happen to us. We shall expire with regret of not truly living. Knowing this, the good thing is that knowing this is the beginning of blazing the trail that is us. That is you, folks. That is you that we came here to experience to share to be a veritable conduit channel for the expression and expansion of ultimate consciousness number two does the number two regret of the dying is i wish i had not worked so hard oh god i wish i hadn't work so hard that is the number two universal regret of the dying like we talked about especially being a corporate bulldog doing things we don't like oh we some of us really do hate our jobs not that we just don't like them there's a difference between not liking something it's probably like on the point of neutrality but some of us do express emotions that is we hate we do hate our jobs those who love what they do never work a day in their lives again those who really love what they are doing are in a constant state of happiness and bliss they are in a dance with life 
and cosmic energy from ultimate consciousness continue to pour to and through them so yes i wish i had not worked so hard it the second regret of the dying why because they were not doing what they came here to do work or job is doing something you don't like or hate when we do follow and honor our calling we will cease to work a day your happiness my happiness and bliss shall cascade through our being your life will be one of a marvel and even though money or great living exp experiences great living experiences may not be your goal you shall have enough you shall have enough resources to live decently and you shall be blasting with joy and in the end what is the value of having a great living expenses having a lot of money whilst being miserable as beautifully said by the Nazarene for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul what shall it profit a man if he or she gains the whole world and lose loses his own soul it's valueless valueless don't be a victim folks let us not be a victim the third regret of the dying is i wish i'd had the courage to express my feelings i.e living authentically and being true to ourselves to myself and yourself you see there are common lines running through all these regrets if we go back and look at them and it's all about being able to express what we have within and not caring so much about the expectations of the without of not living according to others standards the common line or the pith of all these is we have the courage to take care of being true to ourselves and know what others are expecting of us all these other regrets can and will take care of themselves once we are able to do the most important it's just like the domino effect you know if the first doesn't start then the rest wouldn't be activated wouldn't be activated you know just like also newton's first law a body at rest or continue to be in each state of rest or uniform motion unless being acted by an external force conversely not being true to ourselves bring all these hosts of regrets expression of feelings doesn't only entail romanticisms you know expressing your love for somebody you love or your children no but being able to let your within be expressed without repression for that is what we came here to do that is what you me came here to do to express to remove all the resistance from the channel so that ultimate consciousness can pour 
can pour, can work through us, can mold or sculpt us into our ultimate destination, into what we came here to really express or do. We have mentioned it many times on this channel that all nations, every and any nation that repress the emotions or stymie the expression of its compatriots like rigidity in the freedom of speech shall always be behind those that allow its people to freely express themselves and also express who and what they came here to do and to be the human soul your consciousness folks my consciousness can only expand blissfully when these resistances are removed or are non-existent so the ability to have the courage to express freely our feelings is the third regret of the dying and we must all learn from this the soul wants and crave constantly it craves constantly to soar constantly for sorry for expression to be let out be courageous folks be courageous because in the end we shall live alone we shall leave this plane alone imagine yourself on your deathbed always constantly let us do this it shall keep us being courageous and true to ourselves to constantly imagine myself yourself on our deathbed always and remember, because no one, no matter how much they love you, would live here with you. They would not die with you. We are going alone. We shall leave this plane of existence alone. So why don't we reduce our regret by living life exactly on our terms? Exactly from within what we came here to do. Exactly on our terms. Why? And we shall continue to glean the best knowledge and narratives from every corner on the planet for the singular purpose of our expansion, yours and mine. Numero quattro, the fourth regret of the dying is, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. Again, the fourth regret of the dying is universally, universally, not just in Australia or United States, on the whole planet, the fourth regret of the dying is I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. Our souls constantly crave for love and connection. The inability to stay in touch is mostly because we are buried in the societal expectations instead of living life on our own terms, on and in our terms, on terms. Corporate bulldogs being used to execute leaders and shareholders action plans or dreams making them way richer and independent whilst forgetting our own selves you know i'm not against working for corporate what i'm against is doing something that you hate for the corporate just because you have to keep the mortgage or the cars <laughs> oh what a life of miserableness a life of miserableness is it worth it? For now, we may think so, but in the end, we shall regret. We shall regret for doing so. But if we love what we are doing for the corporation, oh my God, then let us, let us do it with all our might. 
we should do over time without asking to be paid because we love what we do we love what we do on our time off we would want to be at work that is the beauty of loving what you do nothing nothing on this planet is worth doing unhappily again nothing is worth doing unhappily no matter irrespective of the material reward because in the end we shall regret we shall regret sadly so the fourth regret of the dying is i wished i had stayed in touch with my friends And I think by extension, we can say mostly even our, with our family, very many uh, people are hardly conscious or in the present. We are hardly conscious or living in the present when we are with our spouse or children, our parents, cousins. We are always thinking about everything but what we are doing in the present moment with them, making us lose a deeper connection with our loved ones. Last but not least, the fifth regret of the dying is, I wish I had let myself be happier. I wish I had let myself be happier. Oh God. We have all seen the domino effect, you know. That has been the sum and substance of this channel, of the Greater School Channel, expansion of consciousness. After not having the courage to live truly to ourselves and living according to others, waking ourselves to death, doing things we hate, not having the courage to express our feelings and not staying in deeper connection or touch with friends and family, all these did not make us happy or happier enough before leaving this plane of existence. Why? Because we could not expand blissfully. Ultimate consciousness's expression through us was blocked, was stymied, manacled by all these, by the without, instead of living authentically from within. From within. have never seen anyone living authentically to their true self who is miserable and such people are only the 10 percent who live here with little or no regret it is not about being a successful musician it is singing your heart out and it's not necessary whether 10 people hear your music 10 million or 10 billion do hear your music eventually. It is immaterial. It is not about being a successful politician. It is about running for that office. And it is not about being on New York Times best-selling author or list. It is writing that book and pouring out what we have within. This shall ultimately make us expand more blissfully, become happier, and we shall leave this plane this planet with little or no regret like the 10 percent like the lucky and fortunate 10 percent and if you are listening to this channel we hope we act accordingly to be part of the 10 percent and by extension let us share this message so the whole globe so everyone wanting to expand according to their own lines shall do so shall do so for that is our ultimate purpose folks our ultimate goal and this was the living life discourses on the greatest call channel and remember not being part of the 90 percent who on their deathbed do regret 
living a life of expectation from without from others from society is by constantly looking within and imagining being on our deathbed this shall help us shape our focus onto the things we want shall cut through the chaff the distractions and we shall act according to what we came here to do rather than what is being expected from us god bless you god bless you your family and the planet we shall see you all very soon Adiós.